says 4G can't be cheap. What's going on guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and Verizon has finally listened to those people that said, hey, I want 4G, but I don't want to spend $299 for a phone like the Droid Bionic or the HTC Thunderbolt. Here's the Pantech breakout. Now, specs-wise, it's not quite up to par with the Thunderbolt, the Droid Charge, the Revolution, the Droid Bionic, all those high-end LTE devices on Verizon, but it still has a pretty respectable 1 gigahertz processor, 5 megapixel camera, 4-inch display, and best of all, it's packing that LTE technology and it's available for an under $100 price tag. It's a pretty decent device. We're going to check it out in the full review to see if this is a device you should get or whether you should go with something like the Droid X2, the Droid 3, or something with a dual core processor. We'll check it out, but first, special thanks to our friends at Best Buy because they hook us up with so many devices for use in our One Paul Bandit games. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, they're going to help you set up your phone with Walkout Working Program. You're going to walk out working to help you set up your email, your web, all that good stuff. So when you walk out, that's all set up. If you get one a phone for grandma, they'll set up her contacts. They'll help her do all that and more. So when she walks out, she can call you fully set up. Enough of that, let's get into it. So kind of continuing where we left off in part one, I'm going to go in here and let you take a look at the contacts so you can see how it looks on Pantex UI. So we'll go into Billy Bob, for example, and you can see here, it shows me that it's one of my Google contacts for my Google account, and then it shows home, group, and then notes. Apparently at some point in one of the device testing videos, I've done Hey BB. So you can see the notes are there, and then I can edit here, and you can see the menus are slightly different, as well. So you have edit contacts, send contact options, and delete. So we're going to edit and take a look at that. And you can add an image, a very typical Google setup here, but you can just tell some of the plus signs and minus signs and kind of the header bar up here look a little bit different from uh, stock Google, or stock Android, if you will. So you can see transitions are pretty quick and easy. So we'll go down here and take a look. Organization, postal address, group, IM notes, nickname, website, event, ringtone, and more. We can go back and either save that or cancel it. So that's what that looks like. And I want to show you the market as well since there have been some changes. If you watch my videos, you already know this, but for somebody coming in for Android for the first time, I want to show you what the market tests look like. And I was downloading Quadrant Standard and uh, Speed Test during the break because I totally forgot they weren't on this device. But here it is. It's a revamped version of the market. It's much better looking. It's kind of got a black background, and it's doing this kind of Metro UI look that we've seen from Windows Phone 7, kind of where you, know, you have a rectangle here and smaller rectangles, then a square, and then you know, kind of draws attention to particular pictures on the page. But you have your apps, games, books, and movies all organized into one area now. So we can go into apps, for example, and you'll see when this pops up, you'll see a bunch of different squares and rectangles. So games, staff picks, then if you scroll down a little bit, we'll see the Verizon uh, approved apps or Verizon endorsed apps, if you will. It's the iHeartRadio Kobo. So we'll just go into, uh, how about we go into, let's find a really good one. Glider 2 by Glue. We'll go into that one. You can see up here, you can share, you can search for specific stuff, and it shows that we can go back by tapping the little uh, shopping bag. So you can see screenshots here, description, get your reviews, and then if you scroll down, more by the developer, and then you have the developer information, related programs, market content, and of course I can download here. When I click download, that's where it's going to bring up those permissions to modify storage, to do system tool changes, network communication, things like that. So you can see again, landscape looks exactly the same, just puts it out on the landscape display and it has my screenshots there and pretty easy to access. Now I've had more than two, scroll back and forth between them. So it's pretty easy, fluid and easy to use, and I like the fact that they bring in books, they bring in music, or excuse me, books and games and movies all into one area. So we'll go into movies, for example, so this is something that's relatively new. We'll go into new releases. We'll go into Tristan and his old. And you can see synopsis, casting credits, related, and I can rent it for $3.99. And same thing over here. We'll go to something borrowed, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. And I can see a preview if I want to. So we'll go into that. Yep, I accept the Google Terms of Service. Let's load this sucker up. Let's try it. So you can see again, it's a little bit dark because there are lights shining on the display right now, but you can kind of see it there. Uh, but quick and easy, and again, you know, it really shows that power of Verizon's 4G LTE because it started right up, very little buffering. And uh, so if you're in an area with 4G LTE, which is quickly becoming a large part of the nation, they're rolling it out pretty aggressively, you're going to be pleased with this device. But again, you know, you see the movies, and I didn't meant to show you this earlier, but we'll go back into the app so you can see. Going to top paid, top free, you can see that they're all kind of grouped in this little square icon grid format, if you will. So I have one, two, three, four, and I kind of scroll down and see the popular free applications, the top grossing apps, and more. And again, you know, it's a single core device, uh, or has a single core processor rather, but still relatively fast 
for what it offers. We'll go into the camera and take a look. Five megapixel camera here, no flash though. So if you're in a low lit situation, you're taking pictures at night, your friends are stumbling out of a club and you're like, I can't wait to put this on Facebook. Well, you're gonna need to carry a light with you because it's gonna be kind of hard to do it without a flash. But we'll bring in a phone. Let's see, we'll bring in the Curve 9360 so we can get a focus on the keyboard uh, on this device. And there is some light. There's quite a bit of light shining down right here. But again, yeah, so this isn't a low lit shot by any means, but we'll come in here and we're gonna power the screen on just so we can take a look at what it looks like. And then I have the physical camera button, but I don't believe, I was gonna say, there's no half press to focus in. And it's either full all the way or nothing. So when I press down, it automatically takes the picture. It doesn't give me the option to zoom in. Now, if I wanna use the zoom, I should be able to do it by pressing and holding here. Nope, looks like it doesn't let me do it there either. I have to physically let go before it'll actually take the picture and kind of focus in. So something to keep in mind uh, there, maybe make or break for you, may not be, but still kind of interesting. And then you can switch pretty easily over to the camcorder and then to the uh, front facing camera. Here, you get some editing options over here on the side. You can change the brightness. You can change the way it looks. You can change a single shot, instant, multi-shot, or division shot. And then you can zoom in as well. So not the most advanced camera. It's not obviously going to replace your digital camera. If you're coming from something you know, like the iPhone 4 or perhaps the, uh, one of the Samsung devices like the Epic 4G Touch or the Galaxy S2 and the camera really matters to you, it's probably not going to be the best device. But again, you've got to keep looking back at that price point and realizing for $99.99, it's pretty decent. So we'll go into the camera here and take a look at these pictures that we just took. And you can see... Again, it's right on par with a typical 5 megapixel camera. Keep in mind there's a lot of light shining down right here, but you can see, focusing on the keys, you can see pretty good detail when it comes to the keys. You can see the chrome sides there, you can see the trackpad, and you can see the icons in the actual display. So it's a good looking picture, and of course this is an unofficial test by all standards, but it still looks pretty good, and if you're in a well-lit situation, you know, you're in a busy street corner and the sun's shining down, you should be fine. It's just those low-lit situations that you're going to have a problem with uh, if you're somebody that takes pictures on a regular basis in clubs, or you take them at night, you want know, to look for a different device. But we're going to load up Quadrant Standard now and take a look at the scores and kind of compare those to some of the other devices on the market. So Quadrant Standard is here. We'll click OK and run the full benchmark. Now, I did take it to some Verizon dead spots over the weekend, and I've been pretty pleased with the overall performance of this device. Now, it doesn't have the best wireless radio by any means. It's not on par with something like the Droid Bionic or the Droid X2. Any of Motorola's devices have excellent wireless radios, but this one's pretty decent. I took it to a dead spot, and the calls were kind of choppy. They broke up, but it never actually dropped the call. The earpiece is nice and loud as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, earpiece is nice and loud, and battery is surprisingly decent. Now, it only has a 1500 milliamp hour battery. You would expect it to be, especially with 4G capabilities, expect it to kind of be lacking in the battery department. I've been relatively pleased. I make it barely through the day. Now, it's not the best device by any means. Android already has a terrible history with battery life, notoriously bad, and this kind of makes it worse to the fact it has 4G LTE. So I make it about 10 hours before the device powers down. So it's right up there on par with the Droid Bionic, despite the fact that the Droid Bionic has a uh, much larger battery, 1,735 milliamp hour battery. So you can see Quadrant Standard brings in, and again, these are unofficial tests. They don't really relate to day-to-day -day performance, but Quadrant Standard brings it in at 1,229. So 1,229, pretty okay score for a mid-range device like this with a single core, one gigahertz processor. So not too terribly bad. It still, it could be better, but again, it's nothing uh, to complain about too much. Let's go to the task manager because I want to show you this. It does, you know, they've been doing this lately with all Android devices. All the manufacturers are kind of installing their own task managers on their customized skin. Samsung has one, HTC has one, now Pantech has one as well. So you don't have to download those applications like Advanced Task Killer. And there's a hubbub going on about those anyway. Now you can use a safe task manager. It's something that's pre installed <clears throat> with the actual device. So you can see Quadrant Standard, a bunch of different stuff loaded up and running right now. Camera Market Gallery. I'm going to end all those and there's no program running right now. So do that regularly, and of course, you know, it's always nice to have the, uh, the application pre-installed on the device. So all in all, you know, pretty decent device, and it comes with some cool features like visual voicemail, which is $299 extra from Verizon. But still, hey, visual voicemail, pretty neat there. And for those people, you know, that are jealous of their friends with iPhones, yeah, they get it for free, but still you have the ability to do it on your Android device as well. Mobile hotspot, a nice touch as well. It's an additional fee from Verizon, but you can utilize that 4G LTE capabilities off of your device. So again, for 100 bucks, it's really a steal and it's a surprisingly well-performing device for $100. I really expected a lot less from this device, to be quite frank with you, because right around that $79 to $109 price range, you're getting mid-range devices that really aren't 
anything to write home about, nothing that's too exciting. And you can see like when I zoom in and out of the menu here, when I click the App Store button, you can see a little bit of lag, and you can see that it takes a little bit of time for the apps to go away, but still, for a mid-range device, it's 100 bucks. I've been pretty pleased with the performance. I think this thing's gonna be great for people that are just going off to college for the first time, or first-time smartphone buyers, somebody that doesn't wanna plunk down $299 for an Android handset, especially when they don't need dual-core processors. <clears throat> This is going to be a pretty decent device for them. I've been, you know, pleased again. No flash in the camera. There are some minor omissions that could have been included, but still, pretty good deal for a hundred bucks. And it's nice to see 4G available to the masses on Verizon Wireless. Much more coverage to come on the Pantech breakout on PhoneDog.com. We'll have dog fights against other devices in the coming days, weeks, and months on PhoneDog.com. Be sure to like us on uh, PhoneDog. Bleh, can't talk today. Be sure to like us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash phone dog. We're giving away tablets. That tablet contest is quickly coming to an end. It ends tomorrow, which is Thursday, the 29th. We'll have plenty of additional contests coming up in the coming weeks. So be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog. And hey, hit me on Twitter with any questions or comments you may have about this device. Phone dog underscore Aaron on Twitter and on Facebook at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.